God. Now turn if you would to 1 Timothy chapter 5 because we're going to see a New Testament reference to this. And again, I'm not going to go into depth on, on the actual tithing aspect, more of just how the money is then spent and what we do with the money because, you know, there's, there's lots of things. There, there's a few things that the church ought to be doing with its finances. And anytime there's an abundance, you know, great, we could do even more things. And, and the church can help out more people and, do, you know, and just kind of do more stuff. But primarily, God's focus in the Old Testament was to take care of the priests, the Levites, and the fatherless and the widows. It's the people that needed to be taken care of were the ones that are being taken care of. And we see the same exact thing in 1 Timothy chapter 5. And we're not going to read the whole chapter. You can do this later. But it tells us how to treat other people. And it talks about, you know, caring for widows. Like, you know, you're supposed to take care of your own family first. It's the family's responsibility to take care of each other. It's the children's responsibility to take care of their parents. It's, you know, if you have a widow in your family, that's your job as a family member to take care of them. And it outlines in 1 Timothy chapter 5 that... You know, you're, the family should be taking care of them first. If they have children, if they have someone else that can take care of them, it's their job. Because we don't want to charge the church to take care of just anybody. It ought to take care of just the people that really need the taking care of. And that is people who, it says here, widows who are widows indeed. And it gives all these requirements for someone who's a widow indeed. And it's not someone who's just living, you know, a real wicked lifestyle and going out and getting drunk and wasting the money that they do have. And this is what so many people today don't understand. People will call the church. And oftentimes, even just church members don't understand, you know, what church is and, and how we give our money and how we, just, you know, how we choose to help people. You might be surprised, and we haven't gotten it here because our, our church isn't published in like phone books and stuff like that, but I, and back when I was pastoring in Prescott Valley, I get calls on a regular basis of people just calling up and saying, hey, do you, do you help with rent? Hey, do you help with food? Hey, do you help with this? Hey, do you? They've never even stepped foot in the church, but they're just calling up and just looking for free handouts. Oh, and they have, and they have these sob stories. Oh man, this happened and this happened and I just, you know, this isn't how things were being done in the New Testament. They weren't just giving out, oh, okay, you have a need, here you go. No, they said, even if you're a widow, a widow, a woman widow that can't work for herself because you know, her husband's dead, so she's left alone, even a widow is, is given a criteria of saying, okay, well, let's see. Have you washed the saints' feet? Have you, have you given yourself to prayer? Have you, are you coming to church? How about we start there? Are you even coming to church? I guarantee you they weren't just giving out a bunch of money to some widow that, that can't even show up to church. So why can't you give me money? That's not the way they had it. No, they have criteria here and saying, okay, there are some people that the church really ought to take care of. But it's, it's limited to those who can't take care of themselves. That's why it says the fatherless. I mean, if you have some orphans or whatever, you know, just some kids that they need to be taken, someone needs to take care of them. They have no family. They have no one to watch out for them. Yeah, the church can take care of those people. You have a widow who's, you know, they're godly. They're trying to serve the Lord. They're of the age. They're, you know, they're 60 years old. They're not young enough to still go out and find another husband and be provided for by someone else. Then, yeah, okay, there is another instance of we could, the church will take care of those people. Because primarily, still, the, the church needs to be supporting the people doing the work of the Lord. All the ministers that are actually working for God are going to be taken care of. We see here in verse number... Um, well, let's just read some of these. In verse number nine, it says, Let not a widow be taken into the number under three score years. Three a score is 20, three score is 60. 60 years old, having been the wife of one man, well reported of for good works. If she have brought up children, if she have lodged strangers, if she have washed the saints' feet, if she have relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work. If you have a widow like that and you're saying, Yep, let's take care of that woman, we're going to take care of that widow, the church will, will supply her need. Make sure she's fed. Make sure she's taken care of. 
but the younger widows refuse. So when the younger widows come and say, oh, I need money, oh, I need to pay, the Bible says the younger widows refuse. For when they have begun to, wa to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. And with all they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not idle only, but tattlers also in busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. And he goes on, I will therefore they marry. Um, I'm not going to get into all the widow thing, but jump down to verse number 17. Or verse number 16. If any man or woman that believe have widows, let them relieve them, and let not the church be charged, that it may relieve them that are widows indeed.